Hello and welcome to Politics Tonight, where we dig and go beyond the headlines for informed analysis of major political stories in Nigeria. I am Ola Jumoke Olatunji. As the governorship and state assembly elections draw closer, political parties and candidates are stepping up campaigns for the polls. On the interview segment for today, we will be discussing the Niger State governorship toss with the candidate of the All Progressives Congress APC in the North Central State, Mohamed Umar Bago. Welcome to Politics Tonight. Stay with us. We will be right back. Welcome back. It's the Watching Politics Tonight, digging beyond the headlines. Now to our interview with the guest of the day. Joining me live from Mina Niger State Capital is the governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress APC in the North Central State, Right Honorable Mohamed Umar Bago. Thank you for joining us tonight, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Now let's get to business. It's four days to the governorship and state assembly elections, and no doubt you have crisscrossed the length and breadth of Niger State to campaign. But what are your five key priorities for people of the state if you win this election? Okay, first and foremost, um, you know, uh, it's, uh, security, education, agriculture, commerce, and tourism. All right, so those are three. I wanted you to mention five. What are your I five priorities? What are the I said security. Yes. Okay. I said security. I said agriculture. I said education. Right. I said commerce. I said tourism. All right. So let's pick security. What? What? To be specific, what? What specially are you considering doing to improve security in that state, especially its impact on education? Yeah, you know, um, when you talk about security, there are two phases to security. The first one is uh, life security. The other one is food security. Uh, when you talk about uh, life security, uh, for people to be able to live uh, in their environment, in their houses, and sleep with their eyes closed is security. We've been having issues of insurgency, issue of uh, kidnappers, uh, headsmen, uh, intertribal clashes uh, in Niger in so many communities of Niger State. So that is what I talk about. Uh, when I talk about insecurity, I talk about that aspect. Then food security. We are agrarian. You know, we need to uh, encourage uh, people to go back to farm and uh, boost our economy through uh, uh, farming. Uh, so that is the food security. All right. So because um, agriculture is the primary uh, economic activities of the majority of Niger's 17 million citizens, how do you intend to improve on this? We are sitting on 76,000 square kilometers of arable land. We have four hydropower stations, but we don't have irrigation uh, dams. So our intention is to uh, create uh, irrigation uh, dams for people to be able to farm throughout the year, not waiting for rainy season. That is number one. Secondly, to encourage uh, mechanized farming, uh, to bring investors in and out of the country to come here and uh, invest. Uh, in agriculture. We are very good in rice farming. 75% uh, of the total rice uh, paddy that's produced in the north comes from Niger State. So you need to understand we are a rice uh, uh, state. Then secondly, we do a lot of maize and a lot of other crops. So we intend to inject so much resources in this. Uh, we're going to uh, be working with the Bank of Agri uh, and the Central Bank in that uh, regard. All right. Now, you were a three-term member of the House of Representatives and previously a banker. How have this prepared you for the task of governance? You, uh, interestingly, this is one of my selling points. And I tell my people, because of my experiences in the private sector and also in the uh, public sector, I'm the best man for the job. I have worked uh, for almost 15 years in the banking industry. Most of the CEOs of the banks in Nigeria are mostly my colleagues. And um, yeah, that gives me an edge, you know, uh, above any other person that wants to uh, be the governor of Niger State. 
that means I have uh, access and I have relationship with uh, people who can come and uh, invest and also bring funding for the state. Then secondly, as a legislator, I have been in National Assembly for the last 12 years. I have worked in so many committees. I have traveled around this country. I have connections everywhere in Nigeria. It is easier for me uh, to penetrate and get things for Niger State. Most of the legislators that are there, they have been re-elected, uh, my colleagues. <clears throat> it is easier for me to come lobby and get certain things in the appropriation. All right. Now, APC is the ruling party in Niger State, and your opponents include the PDP, NNPP, Labour Party, and many others. How do you fancy your chances against the opposition? Uh, we are, by the grace of God, 80% want to win. We're going to strip it because uh, the people... Uh, you saw the last election. Niger State gave the highest vote uh, for APC from the North Central, and we're going to double it this time around by the grace of God. So how much work has gone into your campaign uh, to give you uh, this kind of confidence? We've been working around the clock. We're a team of youth, uh, very young people. We are agile. And uh, it's a youth revolution for Niger State. As you can see, everybody's hands is on deck. All the youth have woken up to say, OK, we want a change. We want our own to be there, you know, and that is what we're doing. So, um, God willing, we're there. All right. Now, APC won in Niger State. I would like to know, does this give you so much confidence or puts you under pressure to deliver your state on Saturday? It's a, it's a double way. Yeah, it puts pressure on me, but it gives me more confidence. The pressure that it gives on me... I don't want to bring a result that is less than what we did last week. That is the pressure. Then uh, the confidence this gives me is that, okay, the people of Niger State love APC. They love our candidature, and by the grace of God, we'll be there. They understand the need where you need to have a state government that is in tandem with the federal government. You know, it is easy for you to access the presidency. It's easy for you to also uh, uh, fix in your policies with that of uh, the federal government. It's easier when you have a state government that is... Uh, the same party with the uh, federal government. All right. Now, because you, you're a banker, I would like to have your take on this. Uh, Niger GDP was $32 billion at the end of 2022 in purchasing power. Uh, would you say this is good enough? And if not, how do you intend to improve on this? Yeah, it is not uh, too good enough, you know, to have a GDP like that. And there are a lot of variables and indexes that you need to look at. Uh, but mostly what affected us as, as a state, uh, I think, uh, started from uh, COVID-19 and the insurgency. And a lot of flood. You know, we are very, uh, we, we suffer a lot from flood. So uh, because we are agrarian, a lot of investment that has gone into farming, into agriculture. You know, our cattle were carted away by uh, headmen. Uh, our farmers were displaced. Communities were ravaged by uh, 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 floods and a, a, lot, a lot more of that. So, uh, but what we'll do differently, and I, I, you know, I told you we have uh, rivers crossing uh, the state from left, right, and center. Uh, we have hydropower dams, but we've not been able to dam the overflow from the dams for agricultural use. And that's what we're going to do. So we're not going to depend on raining season for farming. We're going to make sure that off-season, so that we don't uh, worry about flooding, we don't worry about a lot of things like that. Uh, farmers in Niger State who were doing fishery lost over uh, 10 million US dollars in, uh, to, to, to flood. You know, and these were loans taken from uh, NISAL and CBN. All right, uh, Honorable Bago, we would definitely get deeper into your agenda for Niger State. But for now, let's take this commercial break and I will be right back. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Politics Tonight, and I still have with me the Niger State uh, candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, in Niger State, Mohammed Umar Bago. All right, uh, Honorable, let's get back to security. Uh, banditry is so common in Niger State. If you get elected, what do you intend, or rather, how do you intend to check this? 
Yeah, unfortunately, uh, banditry uh, is ravaging our communities and uh, a lot of people have been displaced. Uh, so what we intend to do first is to bring the local authorities into governance. You know, the traditional institution must be taken uh, good care of because they have a lot of roles to play. Uh, by doing that, you know, we will know exactly the census of people who live in communities and the influx of new people. That is one. Secondly, because most of these people who are into banditry happen to be, in quotes, a Fulani people, and they're also attacking the Fulani assets in agriculture. So we intend to bring a ranger Fulani into the forest. So we're going to build a state ranger, you know, where you would uh, train and equip the Fulani people who are good guys, you know, to be able to protect our, uh, our forest. This is what we're working on. All right, uh, because um, education is the bedrock of any society and, of course, must be highly prioritized, I would like to know what are your laid down practical plans um, on education? Uh, first and foremost, uh, we have to make uh, uh, basic education compulsory. Every other person must go to school. It's a responsibility of government to provide for people of its own state. So we intend to make it free and compulsory. And how we achieve that is that because of the rural urban mass drift of people or teachers, so we intend to create uh, a scheme where people who teach, not just education, even on health, who, who, who decide to stay in the rural areas will give them more uh, uh, funding. We pay them more, we give them accommodation, and we take care of them more. So that a lot of people now uh, grab, uh, migrate back to this rural area so that we can have a lot of uh, teachers there. That is one. Secondly, in terms of um, uh, facilities of learning, people are still manually learning, and the world has moved. So we need to bring in ICT parks you know, in some uh, local government and make sure that people have access uh, to computers. And how we will do that? is that we'll start to talk with uh, companies, we'll talk to banks, we'll talk to investors in Niger State to come in as a CSR. You know, uh, we'll talk to other uh, uh, donor agencies to see how we can get all these uh, e-learning facilities. It's very, very important. Because COVID-19 has taught a lot of people lessons. That means you can learn from home. So because uh, we are now... Um, you need to understand, again, Niger State has over 32,000... As kilometers of uh, square kilometers of lead fiber optics. We are not tapping to that. So we talk to the telcos uh, for them to be able to give us uh, uh, services in that respect as part of their CSR2 or we we'll discuss on how to uh, see how we can uh, give schools at the rural areas uh, uh, internet access. Very important. Then again, oh, right. uh, we'll promote uh, people to go okay go ahead okay and on the on the tertiary part you know we'll make sure we uh, promote people to go into a lot of science subjects because we need a lot of people who would be very important to us however we're going to make vocational training compulsory in uh, uh, tertiary education that is on holidays people will have to go to work you know, like it's in the Europe and every other place. So uh, students don't just come home and just sleep and wait for go back to school. Once you're on holiday, you'll do a compulsory attachment in any of the government facility. It could be a farm, it could be an office, it could be ministry, it could be hospital, anywhere. And um, doing that will encourage people to pick um, a vocational training and have vocational skills uh, so that they can support themselves uh, tomorrow. All right. Uh, you said um, tourism is one of your major um, agenda for the people of Niger State. And in that regard, most of the game resorts in that state used to be tourist attraction. How do you intend to revive them? Uh, first and foremost, you need to understand that Niger State uh, is the closest state to FCT. We have, for instance, a very big uh, waterfall. The only one we have within the north central and northwest, Gurara Waterfalls, you know, and that has not been utilized. Um, uh, there are a lot of in investors who have shown interest, and Niger State will have to put, uh, uh, make sure that we come in and in uh, encourage investors to invest in that. Secondly, uh, we have uh, the only white beach 
you know, in the whole in the whole country in Niger State, Goromana is around New Busanea Kainj. Very, very important. And these places people don't even know about it. So we need to uh, first and foremost showcase exactly what we have to the world. Let them understand that this is what Niger stands, uh, this is what Niger has, and this is what Niger can be. But it's not going to be overnight. It's gradual. You know, some of the game reserves, as you rightly said, have been taken over by bandits. We intend to reclaim them back and uh, also uh, improve on them. All right. Uh, voter turnout at the February 25 presidential and national assembly elections was low in your state, like many others. A few days to the governorship election, what can we expect this time? Yeah, we are talking to people. You know, the voter apathy uh, is a, was a national thing because people were not even sure there would be an election then uh, because of the policies from the CBN, even movement of uh, people. Logistics was a problem. Now we are looking at uh, ways how to transport people from their places to where they could, they could vote. And we are talking to people in the languages they understand and how to come out and vote en masse. And by the grace of God, uh, would have uh, a beautiful turnout. All right, uh, Honorable Bago, you're live on CBC. What's your message to the electorate and the people of Niger State in general? Yeah, first and foremost, come out, please, in mass. Vote. Protect your vote. Your vote counts. Afterwards, let's stay calm. Let's persevere. And let's, whatever result comes out, let's take it as a will of God. We're not calling anybody for violence. We don't encourage that and will not allow that to happen. Thank you. Right, so quickly before we go, I would like to know what informed your choice of running mate in um, Yakubu Garba, who is um, the state chairman of NLC? Uh, you see, uh, it's, it, it's, it's a lot, you know, uh, because Niger State is one of the states where the um, zoning system has worked. You know, we have three geopolitical zones that zone. So when it came to picking up my running mate, what I did first was to take it to the stakeholders of the zone. And uh, 10 people were brought before me. I looked at their CV. I looked at their pedigree. And I know that being a labor man already has a relationship uh, with uh, labor. He understands civil service system. So it's easier for you to carry somebody that will be focused you know, on the issue of service, uh, civil service and allow governance to continue. So our intention is when we come on board, we'll leave issue of civil service and uh, trade unions to the deputy governor's office while I continue with other uh, issues. This is our thinking. All right, then. Thank you very much, Honorable Mohammed uh, Umar Bago is the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, in Niger State. We looked into his agenda for the people of Niger State, and I must say that we wish you the very best uh, on Saturday. Thank you for coming on Politics Tonight. Thank, thank you very much. And thank you very much for watching. That marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But the conversation continues from here. Get in touch with us on Twitter at CBC News NG and at Olajubo KWO using the hashtag Politics Tonight. We are also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash CBC News Nigeria. Join us tomorrow for another edition of Politics Tonight, digging beyond the headlines. I am Olajumoke Olatoji. Goodbye.